Hello, my name is Sawako Hidaka, Executive Director of Asia Society Japan Center in Tokyo, taking stage from New York. Thank you very much, Tom, and the team led by Sanjeev for the past three days of this amazing virtual summit. What an amazing three days. The next hour will be our final program for 2020, and I'd like to welcome the Asia 21 Fellows and the Asia Society family to the International House of Japan, our home in Tokyo. Look, with the Asia 21 leaders in Japan, we put together a program to entice you to come to a global summit in Japan next year. Here's a video created by Japan National Tourism Organization to get us going. Welcome to the 2020 Asia 21 closing session. My name is Rika Beppu, a 2007 Asia 21 fellow, where we called our, our class, or we named our class in Kochi, India, the Super Asians. I'm a founding member of the Asia Society Japan Center, which was established in 2018, and the Japan Asia 21 lead. As you saw from our introduction video, there is so much to see and do in Japan. Whether it's your first time or your 15th time to visit us, you won't, be fail, you won't fail to be inspired or amazed. As much as we in Japan believe that there is a lot to see and do, we really do need to have you all, Asia 21 Fellows, to come and bring your talent, your enthusiasm, and different perspectives so that we can connect, collaborate, and discuss and take action on a range of issues that we face in society 
in our workplaces to ensure fair and equitable treatment to all in Japan and beyond, regardless of your gender, sexual orientation and identity, race and ethnic background, and special needs. Some may say, well, it's Japan. What's, what are the issues? Are there in a modern democracy, a developed country where life expectancy is very high and we regularly talk about reaching 100 years old in good health? Well, as Asia 21ers, we do see the challenges, the inequities, the rigid social norms and pressures to conform to traditional family structures and expectations. We look forward to delving into different themes at the Tokyo Summit next year. And as an introduction to the kind of conversations we would like to spark, I would like to introduce my fellow 21er from 2011, Daisuke Khan. He can outdo anyone on the African drums, has more colorful turtlenecks and funky glasses than anyone I know, and is a strong ally and advocate for LGBT rights and issues in Japan and beyond, and recently appointed president and CEO of the beverage company Cherio Corporation. Together with Daisuke and other 21ers in working in this space, we welcomed our good friend Fumino Sugiyama to an Asia 21 Japan Symposium last year to talk about Japan's same-sex partnership certificates at the local authority level, the Marriage for All same-sex marriage campaign in Japan, and Tokyo Rainbow Pride, which Fumino co-leads and Daisuke's company has sponsored for many years. We were able to welcome fellow 21er Huey Long from Vietnam and from Taiwan, our good friend Joyce Tang to this event last year. First of all, to introduce Fumino, we would like to share a video. Dozo, goran kudasai.一応僕は杉山家の次女として生まれたんですけれども、もう物心ついた時にはこうなんか自分のこの体がおかしいなってずっと思っていて、もう幼稚園の入園式の時にはえお母さんにスカート履けって言われてやだって泣いて逃げてい
transgender people like Fumino not get married because they don't have the proper identification documents, but they also struggle to access health care, education, and to travel with documents that don't match their identity and appearance. 例えば僕なんかだとパスポートがフィーメールなわけですよね。でも見た目こんななのにパスポートフィーメールで入国審査で引っかかっちゃって「お前そのひげ面でフィーメールってどういうことだ?」と。でそれで実は入国拒否にあった国もあったんですよね。あのお恥ずかしながらスピード違反で捕まっちゃった時に「お巡りさんに免許出せ」って言われて免許出したら「この免許がないぞ」と「じゃあ,あの女子の方の登録見てください」って言ったら「あ,ありました」と。そういったことが数えきれないほど普段の生活の中であるので、まあ、僕は個人的にはオープンにして暮らしてますので何かあればこう説明をすればというのはありますけれどもほとんどのまあ当事者はまだまだそういったことを言わずに暮らしているのでそのたんびに引っかかってしまうというのは生活の中でも本当に大きなあの苦痛や苦労があるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。Japan should revise its legal gender recognition law to bring it in line with international human rights standards. Some trans people do want to undergo medical procedures to affirm their gender identity and align their body with the way they want it to be. But those procedures should be completely separate from any legal process to recognize their identity. でちょうど昨年末に、まあ、あの精子提供を受けて彼女が、えー、出産をしてですね今子供と一緒に暮らしてるんですけれども、まあ、彼女がシングルマザーという形で、えー、法律上はなっているなので僕はただの,その同居人という、ね、これだけ毎日おむつ替えてミルクあげてってやっていても、うん、何も関係性はないっていうのが現実かなと。To learn a little bit about Fumino, we'd、we'll、like to turn over to Daisuke and Fumino to have a one on one discussion. Over to you, Daisuke san. Thank you very much, Mika san.、Uh, hello, everyone. It's amazing to be reconnected you know, with you the past few days. I'm Daisuke Khan, a class of 2011, and very happy to、uh, you know, have Fumino Sugiyama、mm-hmm. right next to me.、Uh, you know, he's the amazing activist like, you know, who I've been. Uh, fortunate to work with the past seven years、uh, supporting LGBTQ rights in Japan. So, Fumino you know, has, among like, you know, all the ac- accomplishments, you know, he's the ch- real change maker in L- the LGBTQ community in Japan. I'm very happy to have a conversation to share how excited we are to going to be hosting Asia 21 Summit next year in Tokyo. So, Fumino san, yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Thank you, Daisuke. Hi everyone, I'm Fumino Sugiyama, co representative of Tokyo Rainbow Pride. I'm very、uh, honored to speak to you all today. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. I'm going to talk to you about the first time. 第2子2人目の子供が生まれて2児のパパになりました。So this video that you just saw was taken、uh, about two years ago and the video that you just saw was very serious and heavy but I'd like to start off with a very happy news today.、Um, approximately two weeks ago、um, we were blessed with a second child and I am now a proud father of two children. LGBTQ であるということをオープンにしながら社会生活を送っている日本人というのはほとんど見えない中で本当に僕が小さい時には自分がどうやってこう生きていくのか全く将来が見えなくて本当に膝を抱えて泣いていたような頃から比べるとですねこうやって2人も子供を持って大好きな仲間とか家族とこうやって生活をできているというのは本当に幸せだなというふうに思う一方でまだまだ大変な状況があるというのが現状です。So, here in Japan, in our society,、uh, it is very rare to see LGBT persons live openly according to their um, identity. Um, looking back in my、um, days when I was a child, I really had no idea what my、uh, future would bring me. And I was cooped up crying, thinking about that、uh, unknown and uncertain future. But now、uh, I am blessed with two children and I'm extremely、uh, happy. Um, having so many wonderful friends and colleagues and family around me, 
and uh, I'm filled with happiness in my current life. However, on the other hand, the reality is that there are so many issues that need to be addressed and overcome. 例えばですね、今日実は今日の朝あの、上の子供が40度熱が出ちゃって、急遽病院に行って、えー、入院するとかしないとか、バタバタと、えー、した時にもですね、こうまあ普段は家族として生活していても日本の社会の中では僕たちはまだ家族として認めてもらえないなので病院行った時に父親のところにサインができないんですよねでああそういったまだまだ不安定な中で生活してるんだっていうことを考えると本当にしっかりとこういった活動をして、えー、次世代のためにも、えー、しっかりとこう誰もが暮らしやすい社会っていうのをしっかり作っていかなきゃいけないなというふうに思う今日この頃ですなのでぜひ今日はちょっといろいろお話をさせていただきたいと思いますのでよろしくお願いします So,、um, just this morning,、um, our elder child、um, developed a fever of 40 degrees Celsius, and there was a, a little bit of commotion going on trying to decide whether she needed to be hospitalized or not. So,、um, ordinarily, we would be、um, leading a very happy life as a family unit. However, Um, in Japanese society today, we are not actually legally recognized as a family unit.、Uh, for instance,、uh, when deciding whether we need to ad、um, admit our、uh, child to a hospital, I cannot actually provide my signature as、uh, her parent. And therefore, we are leading our daily lives under this kind of uncertainty and insecurity. And therefore,、um, All the more so, I am feeling the real need to do whatever I can in promoting this movement forward for the sake of the coming generation, for the sake of everyone, so that everyone can live safely and securely. And that's what I'm、um, trying to focus today. And so, based on that introduction, I'd be very happy to discuss various issues. Thank you very much, Fumino. And thank you, especially, for being here. Uh, after your partner just you know, have a delivery, congratulations again. Very happy for you. And also, like you know, having uh, your, new,、uh, your children, your child have a 40 degrees Celsius fever, it's such a commitment to like, you know, spare an hour you know, with us、uh, under that kind of circumstances. So, thank you very much. So,、uh, you know, to start our conversation, you know, I would like to first ask you know, what was your strategy? In the past seven years,、uh, for the societal change in Japan, especially after you became the co representative of Tokyo Rainbow Pride. もともと日本で初めてプライドを開催したのは1994年です。ただ、その日本の社会状況の中ではですね、そのなかなか毎年継続的に開催ができなくて、開催する年もあればしない年もあったと。それを継続的に開催できるようにということで立ち上がった団体が東京レインボープライドという団体が2011年ですね。で、その2012年から毎年このパレードの開催をしています。で僕が関わった2013年から、えー、関わったんですけれども、まあ、その時まだまだそんなプライドの活動なんか注目全くされないような時にどうやったらスポンサーとかあのあしてくれるかなって探してた時に見つけたのがこのカラフルなドリンクだったんですねあこのカラフルなドリンクの会社だったらスポンサーしてくれるんじゃないかとでそれがフレンドリーな人なのかどうなのかも知らずに声をかけたのが大輔でしたで大輔にこういうの応援してくれないかって言ったら一緒いいよやろうっていうふうに言ってくれて、えー、今こういうふうに一緒に活動してきました。プライド in Japan started in 1994 because of the social situation、um, at that time it was really difficult to hold annual、uh, events and therefore、um, our annual、uh, our events were on and off um, and um, It was actually the,、um, the Tokyo、uh, Rainbow Pride that decided that、uh, we will take on the torch to、um, create a situation where we can hold annual events. And that was in 2011. And starting 2012, we were able to、um, hold annual events. And I became involved in 2013 and assumed the、uh, position of the representative co director of TRP.、Um, at that time,、uh, Pride、um, had, was not any,、um, had not received any focus or attention from the general public. And we were trying to look for sponsors for our events. 
And um, while we were searching for sponsors who might be able to support us, uh, I came across this very colorful drink that we have here. And we had no idea whether this um, corporation would be our friend or foe, and, but um, I approached them, and that was um, Daisuke, who actually came to meet us. And um, I've discussed this over with him, and he said, let's do it. And so here we are today. でそもそもそれまでは戦略っていうもの自体がなかったのが現実ですで当時はとにかく声を上げることだけに必死でそんなことまで考える余裕がなかったんですねなので、まあ、僕がプライドに関わってからは、まあ、そういったしっかり戦略的に進めていこうということを、えー、進めてきましたでポイントは大きく分けると3つだと思っていてまず1つ目が手段と目的を明確化することですねで次に、まあ、伝えると伝わるっていうのを明確に、ね、分けて伝わるコミュニケーションを心がけたことで最後に多様性の中にある多様性をしっかり大事にするということその3つを大事にしてきました。So once I、um, became involved, I worked on、uh, trying to establish strategies for our movement. At that time, LGBTQ individuals were desperately trying to get our voices heard, and therefore, in reality, there were no established strategies to speak of. So、um, after my involvement with Vremo Pride, I was able to channel our efforts strategically, including setting targets. And、uh, there are three main points that I can raise. One is、um, namely to clarify means and objectives. Secondly, to strive for communication that reaches a wide audience, not merely communicating what we want to say. And lastly, but not the least, embracing diversity within diversity. でまずその1つ目の手段と目的なんですけどこれはまず何のためにやってるかとで、まあ、例えばその LGBTQ に対する差別と偏見をなくすためですよねじゃあ差別と偏見ってなぜあるかというと今の日本社会というのは基本的にはそういった LGBTQ の人たちがいないという前提で成り立っている社会であるとなのでその前提条件を変えなきゃいけない。でそのためには何が必要かというとやっぱり社会のルールが変わるそういった人たちがいるという前提条件を変えるとなるとやっぱり法律を変えるということだと思うんですねすべての国民は皆平等にと法のもとに皆平等にと言っているにもかかわらず結婚できる人とできない人がいるといわゆるその社会構造の中に差別的な構造が組み込まれてしまっている、まあ、その上ではどうやったってその差別とか偏見というのはなくならないなのでしっかりと法律を変えようと。ただ、パレード自体が法律を変えるわけではなくて法律を変えるのは政治家ですので、まあ、なのでパレードの役割としてはそのルールが変わるような社会の空気を作るそれが1つの大きな役割なんじゃないかという,ふうに認識をしましたでその上でじゃあターゲットをどこにするかとでそれまではどうしてもそのいわゆる当事者の人たちに向けた活動、まあ、当事者がやって当事者に向けた活動をしてきたんですけれどもそうではなくてですねやっぱりその 5% の当事者ではなくて、えー、そういったことを人たちなんて知らないよって関係ないよって無意識のうちに差別に加担してしまっている 95% の非当事者の人たちにこそそういったところに知ってもらわないと意味がないよねなので明確にそのターゲットを 95% の非当事者に絞ったというのがまずファーストステップでした。So the first thing is clarity in our means and objectives and why are we trying to do this? The reason for this is to rid discrimination and prejudice towards LGBT persons. Now,、uh, the reason why there are discrimination and prejudice towards LGBT persons is because the root cause for discrimination and prejudice needs to be、um, uh, eliminated. But、uh, the Japanese society, as it stands, was built on the premise that there are no LGBT persons. While people talk about equality, in fact,、uh, there are、um, individuals who, under the current system, can marry and those who cannot. In other words, society will not change no matter what we do as long as ingrained discrimination is left intact in the very framework of a society. In other words,、um, our parade itself would not be able to change the laws that we have. Uh, laws are、uh, instituted by politicians and enacted. And therefore, we looked at the role that we can play in bringing about change in our legal framework. We felt that、uh, we have to create an atmosphere that is conducive of bringing about change in the legal system. So that's what we targeted at. Uh, up until that time,、uh, the LGBT persons' activities focused primarily 
on uh, activities by uh, them, for them. In other words, the 5% uh, that accounts for the population in Japan are LGDP individuals, but instead of focusing on this 5% of the population, we felt that we needed to focus and try to communicate with the remaining 95% of the population. Um, because um, these are the people who unconsciously are complicit in creating a society uh, where LGBTQ individuals are um, subject to discrimination and prejudice. And therefore, without a focusing on them, we would not be able to change the rules of a society. Therefore, we decided to target uh, the 95% of the population in our efforts. でそこで2つ目のポイントなんですけどやっぱり伝えると伝わるを、ね、明確に、ね、意識してコミュニケーションをしましたであの皆さんもご経験あると思うんですけれどもこうびっしりと字が詰まったスライドで、ね、一生懸命プレゼンされる方いるんですがその伝えたい熱い気持ちは分かるんだけど、まあ、字がびっしり詰まりすぎて何言いたいのか分からないよというようなことが、ね、あると思うんですねで日本のプライドの活動というのはそれまでずっとそうだったんです当事者の人が、ね、あの我々の人権をって言って思いは分かるんだけれどもあのそれが強すぎて伝わるコミュニケーションではなかったなのでそれをしっかりと伝わるコミュニケーションにしていこうと、まあ、あのガラッと変えたのはそれまでシリアルな、えー、あシリアスなデモ活動デモ行進だったのをこう誰もが参加しやすいようなフェスティバルに切り替えたということが大事でしたでその嬉しいとか楽しいっていうそのポジティブな、えー、メッセージを発信したりとか、えー、華やかな演出をしてみたりということでいろんな人を引きつけたりまたあのチラシとか、えー、例えばホームページなんかもプロのコピーライターを入れたりとかプロのデザイナーを入れてしっかりと、えー、分かりやすく、えー、いろんな人に伝わるような広く伝わるようなコミュニケーションを心がけたということが大きかったと思います。Uh, the second point is being aware of the difference in communicating in the way that reaches people and communicating for communication's sake, and not, and not communicating for communication's sake. We focused on how to communicate in a way that people would be receptive to our message. Um, perhaps an analogy is a person who makes a presentation using PowerPoints full of text. Have you ever found yourself thinking that you certainly feel the presenter's eagerness, but it obscures the point? The Pride movement in Japan, in a way, up to that time, was like this presentation material overloaded with information. Therefore, in order to get our message across to as many people as possible, we switched the Pride demonstration、uh, march. By and for、um, LGDP individuals to a festival that allows anyone who wishes to participate. And、um, although、uh, these serious、uh, demonstrations were important, but it shouldn't have、uh, been、uh, limited to that, I think by providing a very positive and fun message, as well as incorporating fine,、uh, fun stages,、um, and also having professional designers work on our、um, flyers and so forth, it、um, allowed、um, people who、uh, might be interested to actually take part in our、um, events. でそういったまあ戦略がある程度成功してですね2012年に5000人だった参加者は2019年には20万人を超える方々にご参加いただけたとで全国のメディアで扱われるようになって社会的にもポジティブに受け入れられるようになったというふうになってきました。Uh, the strategy paid off and participants in our 2015,、um, Pride,、uh, which was 5,000, grew to over 200,000 in 2019.、Um, uh, we were also covered widely by national media. And the social atmosphere steadily became more positive towards LGBTQ persons. でそこで一番大きかったのは2015年ですね、日本で初めて同性パートナーに対してパートナーシップ証明書を渋谷区で発行したというニュースが流れたんですね。でまあ、あのこれによって今までそういった人たちがいないという前提からそういう人たちがいるよねというふうに前提条件が変わったのが大きかったと思います、まあ、これを本当に皮切りにあの大手の企業だったりとか、まあ、いろんな人たちがこの LGBTQ の存在に注目をするようになりました。
、でまあ、あのその後にちょうど今5年ぐらい経ってですね、えー、全国で60の自治体が同じような、えー、パートナーシップの、えー、制度を導入してで今1300組ぐらいのです、ね、当事者の方たちが申請を行ったということですでさらにその流れを受けて2019年には日本で初めて同性婚を、ね、求める訴訟が起きたというのも大きな出来事だったと思います。Um, I feel that the biggest turning point came in 2015 when Tokyo's、uh, Shibuya Ward issued the first ever same sex partner certificate in Japan.、Um, it、um, actually helped to bring a change about in our society where the very premise of our society was based on the understanding that there are no、um, LGBTQ individuals to actually recognizing、uh, their existence. Um, and so we felt that the premise of the Japanese society that there are no LGBTQ individuals was overturned. And that actually、uh, started to、um, receive、um, various、uh, support and attention from large corporations as well as many other individuals in the community. And people started to notice of our presence.、Um, also, following the Shibuya Ward's example, Um, five years uh, since um, the Shibuya Ward issued a certificate,、uh, currently there are over 60、uh, municipalities that introduced this system, and I understand that、um, over 1,300 couples are applying for it. And、uh, based on this、uh, flow of events,、um, in 2019, 13、um, couples. Uh, filed lawsuits nationwide seeking equality in marriage,、uh, same sex marriage, which、uh, was the very first time in、uh, Japanese history. こういった大きな流れになってきたからこそ大切にしているのが、えー、3番目のポイントですね、多様性の中にもある多様性を大事にするということです。まあ、LGBT って一言で言っても本当にいろんな人がいるので、まあ、ゲイの人だからといって決して同じ意見ではないそういった多様な意見を取り入れるとあの時にはまあ自分の考え方と違ったりとか、まあ、自分の耳には痛いような、ね、意見でもしっかりと取り入れていこうと、まあ、そういったことをしていったということですね。でまあ、20万人って言ってもですね、20万人という人がいるわけではなくてですね、それはいろんな人が一人一人一人が集まって20万という数字を作っているだけですので、まあ、大きくなればなる,なるほど一人の人目の前の人の意見をしっかりと大切にして耳を傾けるということを気をつけていきました。Um, and that leads to a point number three.、Uh, in, in other words, because we were able to create a large wave of our movement, it's all the more important to、uh, face each and every person in front of us. In other words, this is the third point, namely、uh, the value of、uh, diversity within diversity.、Um, so、uh, we talk about LGBTQ individuals, but there is no、uh, such One individual. In other words, there are a variety of LGBTQ individuals. And、um, not all gays are the same.、Uh, there are various、uh, opinions among them. And therefore, it was important for us to actually acknowledge these differences among、uh, LGBTQ individuals. And at times, even if it's difficult to hear, we、uh, needed to actually listen to those who. Disagree with us or who have different opinions and、uh, take them seriously. So, we talk about、uh, 200,000 000 LGBT individuals in、uh, Japan. However, there is no collective um, LGBT um, individual. Um, rather,、uh, 20, 200,000 are、uh, a total sum of individual. LGBT individuals, and we felt the need and value of focusing on each and every one of them and actually treated them, treating them individually and recognizing the diversity. Thank you, Fumino.、Um, you know, such amazing success, and then we've seen a huge growth in the participation in Tokyo Rainbow Pride. And, you know,、uh, Uh, in addition to that, you know, we've seen widespread of pride parades, you know, not only in Tokyo, but also across Japan. So, you know, if you live in, even in the countryside, you know, you can basically participate in a pride parade right now. You know, we, my company sponsored like, you know, 11 pride parades back in 2019. 
Uh, but you know, this year, thanks to COVID, you know, all the Pride parades basically had to like you know kind of shut down, went virtual. And so I'd like to ask the question around the impact of COVID. You know, in the next uh, question. Uh, so the you know basically COVID forced us to change you know many things this year. And what kind of change you know it brought you to to your activities? あのこの COVID-19 によって今年のパレードはえっと残念ながら中止にしました。でもその分オンラインに切り替えたんですね。で中止にするっていうことは僕にとっても非常に苦しい決断だったんですけれども、それを無理にやることによって、まあ、あの本当にいろんな人に迷惑かけちゃいけないなというのは一番大きかったんですが、まあ、ただ結果的には、えー、オンラインに切り替えたことによって、45万人を超える方々に、えー、視聴してもらえたというのは非常に大きかったんじゃないかなというふうに思います、まあ、それまでやっぱりその場所にとらわれていた、あの限られた場所にかあのとらわれていたんですけれども、オンラインにしたことによって、場所とかね、本当に地方の人でもそうだし、例えば障害があって、会場にアクセスできない人もそうだし、えー、まあそれこそ国境を越えていろんな人たちが参加してくれたということでこれまで以上に可能性が、ね、広がったんじゃないかなというふうに思っています。Uh, regrettably, because of COVID 19, we had to decide to cancel this year's um, um, Pride and、uh, switch to、um, online、um, an event. And、uh, making this decision to cancel this year was an extremely difficult one for me.、Um, and、uh, I was most concerned of、uh, causing other people、um, issues and、um, being an inconvenience to them. But ultimately,、uh, when、uh, that decision was made、um, as a result、um, of going online, we were able to gain 450,000 a u d i e n c e And that was extremely a, a big event. And、um, so far, until we switched to on, an online event, I think we were、um, geographically limited to one location. And it's not only the, the location that we were limited to, there were a lot of、um, people、uh, who could not access、uh, the event, for instance, because、um, they are. Um, um, Because of the disabilities that they have.、Um, furthermore, an online event allowed people to participate across borders, and therefore, to that extent, we were able to further expand、um, our、uh, sphere. So,、uh, you know, for the time constraints, you know, we, this is going to be the last question you know, I'm going to ask to Fumino. So, the last question is you know, we'll have the Asia 21 Young Leaders Summit in Japan next year. I'm very excited about this. And you know, it's, it is going to gather the change makers and leaders from across the Asia and, you know, to, have, you know, to have them come here in Tokyo physically, hopefully. And how do you think the summit you know, to be the catalyst to promote societal change、uh, in Japan? まあの歪みというか経済発展してきた背景にはですねやっぱりその人権と環境っていうのを置き去ってきたえだからこそ発展できた日本社会だったんじゃないかなというふうに思っていますでまあただそこまで進んできてしまったのは仕方がないんですがまあその効果不効果この COVID-19 によって今本当に日本社会まあ世界が変わろうとしているこれからその世界を再構築していくこのタイミングでしっかりとこの人権と環境というまあ2つの視点をですね組み込んだ社会を作っていくっていうことが何よりも大事なんじゃないかなというふうに思ってるんですね。でまあ、あの文化とか言葉は違えどこういった課題解決のプロセスっていうのは本当にあの世界で共通することたくさんあると思いますので、まああのまあ、今、本当に日本もあの大きく変わろうとしていますそのエネルギーたくさん、ね、あるのでぜひ皆さんにも日本にいらしていただいてさらにそれを後押ししてほしいなと思いますしぜひこの今の日本のエネルギーを皆さんにも来て持って帰っていただきたいなというふうに思っています。I think、uh, the negative、uh, result of Japanese、uh, economic development was to leave behind an extremely crucial、um, issue of human rights and environment. And for better or worse,、uh, because of COVID 19, I think the whole world is going through a major change. And we are、um, at a crossroad where we will be reconstructing、uh, the world. And at this very time, Um, I think、uh, that we need to incorporate a perspective that would、um, build in uh, the um, 
the engagements for human rights and environment and uh, re rebuilding our international society. I think that's extremely important. Uh, so when we look at the world, there are many differences in terms of cultures and language. However, in terms of um, problem-solving um, approaches, um, I think there is a global commonality, and uh, Japan is also uh, trying to change, and there's a huge amount of energy um, geared to uh, that uh, end. And therefore, Japan is about to change. I hope that you would all come to visit Japan so that you may share with us the energy as well as the activities that we are engaged in and bring back that energy with you when you return home. まあ、の僕が LGBTQ の活動をしているのは決して LGBTQ のためだけではありません LGBTQ を含む全ての人が暮らしやすい社会っていうのを作っていきたいと、まあ、それと同じように日本でこの活動をするのは決して日本のためだけではなくて、えー、日本でこういったことをすることによってアジアをそして世界にしっかり発信していきたいという思いでやっていますなのでぜひ来年のこのアジア21がですねあの皆さんにとってそういった機会になればいいなというふうに思っていますで最後にあの一番大事なポイントというのを忘れてたんですけど僕何よりも大事なのはノミニケーションだというふうに思っていますあの飲むということとねコミュニケーションをかけて、まあ、皆さんと乾杯しながらですねいろんな意見を交換するこれが何よりも社会を変える、えー、大きなそしてまあ小さなという大きな第一歩だと思いますので日本おいしいものたくさんあります、えー、ぜひ来年皆さんと一緒に乾杯できるのを楽しみにしておりますどうもありがとうございました Uh, so, LGBT activities are not done for LGBTQ individuals' sake alone. In other words, we are engaged in this movement so that we can create a society in which um, every person, no matter who they are, can live uh, safely and securely. Um, we are not doing uh, our activities in Japan for Japan's sake alone. Uh, we are doing our work here in Japan so that it might bring change and send messages across Asia and ultimately to the entire globe. And um, so uh, Asia 21 next year would be an opportune opportunity for you to come and work with us. Um, and in fact, I forgot one most important point that I wanted to mention, and that is the uh, most important thing I believe is nomination, in other words, drinking and communicating at the same time. Um, by uh, sharing our drinks we, and eating, we can exchange our opinions. And this might be a small or maybe a big step forward in uh, making a further change in the world. So I hope that uh, you would take on this opportunity and come with us. There are so many great places in Japan to eat and drink. Um, and hopefully you can come and join with us in this effort. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fumino. For being here, and congratulations again for your newborn. Uh, you are creating a model, new model for like the you know, new Japanese family model, and I think you know you are the greatest role model we've ever had in the community. And you know, in front of us, like the, there's a huge and beautiful Japanese garden, and we see like you know, it's a beautiful scenery. And I'm very excited to have you here next year, and you know, share this amazing scenery and walk with you guys. Uh, through the, this Japanese garden. And Fumino owns the bar at the Golden Guy. And I think Sawako-san will mention that like, you know, in five minutes. But you know, we have an amazing list of entertainment awaits. So you know, we've been through a lot of self-isolation this year. But hopefully, uh, if we are resilient enough, I think we have an amazing year ahead. And thank you again, everyone, for listening. And you know, uh, back to you, Dika-san. Thank you, Daisuke and Fumino, for your very insightful discussion. So we really do sincerely look forward to welcoming you all, the Asia 21 community, to Japan next year. We look forward to welcoming Fumino to our summit as well. And now, switching back to Saako for a list of unique places to visit and plan ahead for when you visit us next year. Thank you, Rika. Now, I would like to introduce three must-sees in Tokyo. It's been curated by the Japan Center's Executive Committee. I wanted to give you three locations that we wanted to um, take you. Um, one is Team Lab, Borderless. 
It's basically uh, formed by Toshiyuki Inoko in 2001 with just four people. It's an international art collective consisting of artists, programmers, engineers, CG animators, mathematicians, and architects who collaborates to navigate art, science, and technology and nature. It's an interactive art museum, fully digital, and you're going to have a blast there. The next place that we want to take you is Golden Guy, uh, which uh, Humino has a, um, a bar there. It's one of the best known yokochos in Tokyo. Golden Guy is home to more than 280 establishments in approximately 6,500 square meters or 1.6 acres, which are mostly bars. The story goes that in the late 1940s, occupying forces drove bars and brothels into this area, which together formed a rough and ready entertainment district. It seems that Golden Guy missed the memo about urban gentrification and remained largely unchanged for many years. However, in the 1980s, Yakuza threatened to burn it down to make way to look for large developments. But locals stepped up to guard and protect it. Thanks to their efforts, we can still enjoy it today. And this, in this er, um, area, they're known um, for their patrons to bar hop. So each customer has their favorite spots, and they hop around five to six um, bars a night, a standard routine there. And um, one legendary bar owner said, I've met many people bar hopping here. You're not simply paying money to drink. It was a place where culture was being created through social encounters. And the last place that we want to take you is Meiji Shrine. There are shrines everywhere in Japan, but only a handful are called Jingu. This suffix shows that they enshrine the past emperor or has a connection to the imperial family. Now, um, Meiji Jingu, it was basically just wilderness, but it was created um, after the passing of Meiji, Emperor Meiji. And um, it began the construction in 1915 and completed in 1920. So they are celebrating their 100th anniversary. Um, it's open from sunrise to sunset to the public and about Three million people will visit the new, during the New Year's holiday for Hatsumode. But when you go there in the early morning for a walk, you're getting a treat. Clean, fresh air, relaxing environment for the soul, and eye-opening sceneries awaits you. As you, encounter the, as you enter the shrine and walk along the rocky pavements, you will go through three gigantic tori gates that guards the shrine. With each tori, you go deeper into the quiet forest to the main shrine for a morning prayer. When you get there in the tranquility, you will be at peace and energized. You are in central Tokyo, but the hustle and bustle are miles away. And as a bonus, um, we want to introduce you to Sarashina Hori in Azabujuba, just down the hill from I House. In season four of Anthony Bourdain's No Reservation, he travels to Tokyo and um, with his friend and chef, Masaharu Morimoto, he goes to Sarashina Hori for soba noodles and they have been serving soba for 230 years. I hope you will get to visit these places in person. Now back to you, Rika. Thank you very much, Saako. And now we'd we'll like to share a video message from a special guest who has strong ties to Japan as well as Asia society. Goran kudasai. Well, greetings each and every one of you uh, who have been participating in the Asia 21 virtual global summit uh, this year. I'm Kevin Rudd, former Prime Minister of Australia, currently President of the Asia Society Policy Institute. And according to recent emails, I understand I'm about to become president of the Asia Society globally. Asia 21, I think, is a fantastic idea because it brings together all of you who are young achievers across our wider region. You are coming from multiple different backgrounds, some in government, 
some in politics, uh, some in wider public administration, others uh, in business, uh, in commerce and in trade, others still in science and engineering and in innovation. Uh, and more of you again from the wonderful world of finance. All of your creative talents are important, but they are made more important when we blend them together. It's like having one giant wok party. That's what Asia 21 is all about, as we stir the ingredients and produce a wonderful dish. Uh, and a wonderful dish is made up of multiple flavors and multiple seasonings and multiple talents on the part of the chefs. So I look forward as the incoming president of the Asian Society for getting to know each of you better. Uh, I would like each of your careers to succeed. I want you to be able to use professionally and personally and creatively the networks that we create. Nothing wrong with that. But I also want you to give back to the Asia Society family globally as we seek to build this platform across the world to make this Asia Society a truly global institution. We're also in the lead up to long-term preparations uh, for the Asia 21 uh, Global Summit uh, at the end of 2021. In December 2021, we're planning on convening in Tokyo. So I'd encourage each and every one of you, even though it's 12 months away, to dust off your passports, dust off uh, your, uh, your travel bags, and get ready for an exciting trip to Japan. I can think of no better place than uh, Tokyo to bring us all together. I would hope to be there myself as well. Japan is a great country, full of technological dynamism, an extraordinary youth culture. If you look at what's emerging from Japanese cinema these days, uh, it is truly a creative and inspiring product. And it's a fun place to be. And so for each of you, get your skates on, get ready. Uh, we're off to Tokyo, Japan in 12 months time. Make sure you are there. Be there, or as we said as kids when I was growing up, be there or be a square. Uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Um, I, look, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this year's uh, virtual summit and I look forward very much to hearing from you about how we can take this Asia 21 network to the next level of what we can achieve globally for the Asia Society family and what we can achieve also in helping to support and advance your careers individually and locally. Thank you, Kevin, very much for your words of support and encouragement. As he says, see you in Tokyo, see you here, or be square. And thank you to Daisuke and Fumino for the discussion today. And we sincerely look forward to welcome you to Tokyo in 12 months' time. Thank you very much for joining us for the closing session. Sayonara.